Sometimes in life we just suffer. Sometimes it's from being totally withdrawn. Or so much stress that we are totally anxious. Or so tired that we are totally burnt out. But our current position is not our final destination. No, indeed. There's hope. So whether it's your personal life, your career, your relationship, your business, or your job, we say there's reason to believe again. And we present from Andy's personal development, the breakout room. It's the place for health, happiness, and prosperity. Stay tuned for more. Hi, this is Andy of Andy's Personal Development, and we are live in the breakout room with our special guest, high performance coach, Roman Fisher. Roman, welcome to the breakout room. How are you doing today? Pretty, uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, thanks for taking the time out of your schedule to join us. And I'm sure that the time we're going to spend here together will be of value. And we have something interesting to share with our audience, our people who are going to tune into this broadcast after the recording. So, Roman, what I normally do is I go back, way back into time. For you, it may not be that long because you look like a pretty young guy. Um, there is something I want to focus on. When you were 15 years, you saw something about your brother with regards to weightlifting and so on. But could you recall anything of account that would have impacted your life before that stage, before the 15 years as a young man growing up? Yeah, let me see. So that was one of those core things that really got me into fitness initially. Before that, I mean, if I'm going to be totally honest, there wasn't much before that that got me into fitness. Obviously, I was aware that, you know, weightlifting was a thing. You could definitely lift weights and change your, you know, overall physique and even improve your mental state in the process. So I was familiar that being a thing and that being, um, you know, an option for bettering yourself and bettering your overall health and wellness, but I never really took the steps into it. So I honestly didn't have much of a backstory as much as I hate to admit it. I did not have much of a backstory before that time with my brother, you know, I'm other than, I guess, you know, in physical education or PE for short, as they call it in school, that was yeah. about the only physical exercise I really did. And I could also throw in that I did soccer, but I never really did like the weightlifting or anything in the gym until my brother came into play. But I will say now mm -hmm. that I'm kind of thinking and talking about it some, I was into soccer, though. That was my that was my physical activity, if you will. So okay. that was my huge um, you know, thing for me in the past. And I kind of miss it thinking back on it. Now. Like, that was my, that was my physical activity where I got, obviously it was just basically cardio. I mean, yes, yeah, yeah. you would strengthen your legs when playing soccer some, but it was mainly a cardio exercise for sure. And, okay. but yeah, it was fun. That was, that was one of the things that kept me, you know, in shape, especially as a kid. Of course, it didn't really put much muscle on me or anything. Uh, <laughs> it was always, if anything, it just made me more, um, kept me skinny, but didn't, you know, have me gain weight either. So it kept me overall just trim. But that was that was one of those things that I was doing prior to my brother uh, lifting weights and prior to actually getting into weightlifting myself. Oh, great. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing, Roman. So it says here, when you were 15 years old, you saw your younger brother lifting weights, which help inspire you to do the same. And you also wanted to get a six pack and had a strong desire to want to live longer and just be healthier in general. Yep. Would you say that you were struggling with health issues at that time? Because you mentioned specifically six pack and then to be a healthier person in general. Were you struggling with eating disorders or having a problem with getting the weight off at that time? Yeah, so I was not 
and that's the thing like i wasn't really like fat Mm -hmm. so to speak but i wasn't really like overall super super trim either like i wasn't like super cut up like i was skinny yeah i wasn't like super fat i was more skinny fat if you will to be very technical on it you know i didn't have much muscle very little muscle so i was more uh, skinny but I had a little fat covering my um, abs. So I was more of that skinny fat type kid that people would always uh, poke fun at. So yeah, while I wasn't like super unhealthy, I wasn't really healthy because I didn't really take care of what I was putting in and out of my body. And I also too, yeah, just didn't really do much exercise outside of soccer in my past. But after that, I didn't do much of anything physically. Um, And I would kind of let myself go a little bit. Obviously, I didn't get like super overweight, but Mm. I would never really got into like full shape like I have been, you know, especially in my uh, recent years. Yeah. But yeah. yeah that one of the things I struggled with mm-hmm. was just not eating super healthy and always having those food cravings, especially the sugar cravings. So I would always just eat, you know, Twizzlers. That was my guilty pleasure. That was oh. my go. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was my go to yeah. snack or go to uh-huh. candy that I could not ever just get myself away from to save my life so that was my biggest top struggle when it would come to you you know my guilty pleasure of food yeah. or if you even want to call it food i don't i don't consider it food but <laughs> it was it, it was a snack and i was addicted to twizzlers and even really anything beyond that reese's snickers y- you name it i mean obviously in moderation that stuff's not gonna kill you but it's still better to not have it in your diet or at least yeah. very very little but i would be literally snacking that stuff you know every day like wow. almost 24 7 like i could not get, i couldn't get away from it i, I don't even know i don't even i don't even want to know how much sugar i had in my past like wow. it's probably pretty scary if you would add yeah. add up all the numbers yeah, you know, I want to dive deep a little bit into your foundation a little more, but I want to take up on that point you just brought about there with regards to not being able to resist the urge for sugar. Right. You know, Twizzlers, and you had it almost, well, every day basically as part of your diet. Roman, what is the advice, and I want to get into this right away, that you would give to people who have a similar challenge and they're saying to themselves, I need someone to tell me from a practical perspective, not a theory, but practical perspective, how can I overcome this desire that I know is unhealthy for me? What are some of the things that I should do so that I can manage myself better as a health perspective is concerned? Yes, for sure. So to get away from just the unhealthy addiction, especially when it comes to sugar, because I would say that is the most addicting thing out of any you know ingredient that you could possibly have or consume within Mm -hmm. your body Mm -hmm. so really stepping away from that sugar obviously just to uh, sum it up would be the best bet now it's not that simple though as i've already understood from my past like i know from personal experience stepping away from cravings especially sugar cravings it's not an easy thing to do it is one of the most challenging things you could do with your overall nutrition. So my best advice and recommendation, and I'll even share a few tips here. The first thing is to realize you have that addiction. Some people don't even know they have the addiction. They just go along with it. You know, it's like clockwork. It's kind of like working a job, but just like with eating, (laughs) it's, it's kind of in that, you know, perspective, it's, kind of weird to put it like that but that is pretty uh-huh. accurate at, you know yeah, it's yeah it's one of those things people just get so used to it's routine 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 and um, they just kind of do it consistently so just stepping away um from that sugar but first knowing you have that sugar addiction mm-hmm. and just realizing that fully after that you can realize that you have that issue or that problem and it's been there and it probably has been there a while from yeah. there you know, slowly cut out sugar. Don't just cut out sugar completely. Yes, ideally, that's the best thing you could do. But it's not at the same time, because most people can't just quit cold turkey. It's just like with smoking. Um, You know, obviously, that's horrible to you to smoke for your overall health and lungs. And when people just quit smoking cold turkey, 
they almost always go back to it because it's such a drastic sudden change for their body and their body's like whoa i what are you wasn't expecting me? that yeah <laughs> i wasn't expecting that change yeah. from smoking yeah. like almost all the time like a freight mm-hmm. train to you not at all so yeah. what's going on <laughs> so yeah. yeah it's it's just like that you know our body really loves consistency and routine and cutting out that sugar, cutting out that sugar from your overall nutrition and um, just your overall eating that will help, but doing it gradually. So my best advice, just to even be a little more specific with that is to, let's say you have, uh, let's say you have like 36 grams of sugar or 50 grams of sugar a day, which is well above the daily intake. That's right. The daily intakes 36 grams yeah, at the most. Right. Yeah. So let's say you have more than that. Let's say you have like 50. Try to cut it. If not in half, try to at least cut it in a quarter of what you have in a day and yeah. just gradually cut out, you know, sugar uh, filled foods. And you could even do it in other ways too. You could, let's say you have uh, four candy bars, uh, just a, a simple example. Let's say you have four uh, Snickers bars in a day. And you're that, you know, addicted (laughs) by cutting out, try cutting out at least one of those four bars um, each day or half of that and then build upon that. So that's just a, you know, very small, loose example, but that's just one of those ways of doing it gradually. After that, you can kind of wean yourself off. So let me get this. You're saying that it should be like baby steps first time. Yes. And as time goes on, you gradually increase because you need to be able to have that confidence that you're actually going to stay on course. Yes. Have it in the back of mind that, you know what, I need to drop this entirely. But if I wean myself off it gradually, the body, my system is going to quicker accept it rather than I trying to do it just in a speed or in a rush all at the same time. I get it. Exactly. I get it. What additionally can they do in terms of the mindset, that mental attitude that they're supposed to have towards that situation? Yes. So other than realizing mentally that you have that addiction, obviously, again, that's the first uh, step there. But also, I would say from there, from yeah. just a overall um, you know, self-esteem yes. standpoint with your mental state, knowing yeah. that you're human to you. So knowing Mm -hmm. that this isn't an overnight thing, it's not going to just, again, like gradual steps, it's not going to just go away completely right away. It's one of those things, you know, addictions in general are not easy and they're never quick to overcome. So knowing that you're human, it's a process. It takes time. It's a journey. And in this journey, you will be, you know, better for it in the end, but knowing that you just got to enjoy the journey by, you know, becoming a better, healthier you in the process. And also too, don't be afraid. I know it sounds counterproductive, but don't be afraid at the end of the week to give yourself one small little cheat meal. Even if it has just a little bit of sugar, that's fine. But just, just do it, you know, once, you know, once a week or once every other week, give yourself a little small cheat meal, not too much. That way you're not going to binge and you can still kind of reward yourself, uh, you know, for, cutting out that sugar and then uh, reward yourself back with maybe just a little sugar. I know that sounds very counterproductive, (laughs) but at the same time, it'll, you know, get your mindset in the right place, knowing that, Hey, I cut out this much sugar this week. Okay. At the end of the week, I can just treat myself just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I don't even really need the sugar anymore, or I very little. And then I can just go on with my day and mainly eat a clean, healthy diet with little to no sugar. And it, it, over time, that'll definitely happen. But yeah, just really remembering and honing in that you're just a human being and we're all in that, you know, in this journey together, we're all going to mess up every now and then. Um, no, No one's perfect. Nothing's perfect. But these things take time. Just knowing that that'll make it a lot easier too. And it'll take a lot of pressure off of yourself because a lot of people, that's another thing. A lot of people put so much pressure on themselves to, you know, cut this much sugar out or lose this much weight in this amount of time. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Roman. I like the idea of being able to place a higher value on yourself as an individual, as a human being. 
Because at the end of the day, nobody else is going to do it for you. Right. You have to do it for yourself. So it starts with you. Exactly. That, picture, that mental attitude. I love that. And it brings me to the point of what I was looking at in terms of the deep dive. Going back to your foundation, would you say that you had also a sort of epiphany when it came to bringing more value to yourself as an individual that you wanted to do something better, something more? Or was it a combination of that and a sense of awareness made from a, a spiritual perspective of who Roman Fisher was? And now you're beginning to establish yourself as an individual and grow and develop from there. What was it like for you in terms of that sense of value that you wanted to do so much better for you, Roman Fisher? Yeah, that's a great question. Really, it consisted of, you know, after, you know, seeing um, the weightlifting done with my, you know, my brother after that, really two things really uh, stood out to me. Yeah. One being very serious, one being still serious, but not to the same level as the as oh. the uh, former. Yeah. And these two things, I'll definitely specify them in a second, but these two things were, were what really uh, transformed me. And if you will, transform me and got me going into the journey and path that I've been on ever since. But the two things here, the first thing really, um, you know, I was already weightlifting. This was after I got into the weightlifting then, but I wasn't really keen or very aware, or at least I didn't really, <laughs> I'll be honest, I really didn't care about my diet too much. And it, that's not obviously yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Um, obviously that's changed since, but I wasn't really too aware or really cared much about what I was putting in my body, but that changed, you know, ever since my grandpa, um, you know, someone I was always close to you mm -hmm. and like anyone in your family, when you know, yeah. someone, you love someone and they're there for you. And then just all of a sudden, suddenly they're, you know, gone, they pass away. That's that, that makes it rough, you know, especially, yeah, when it's your family member and okay. someone you know and love. But yeah, the fact that he um, used to be active in the military, but then let himself go and eventually just stopped really, you know, caring about what he was putting in his body. He, he was a sugar addict, just like I used to be. Oh. And yeah, sadly, that's, and that's why I'm so keen on really limiting my sugar intake, if not even cutting it out as much as possible but the fact that he was so heavily addicted to sugar itself and then he just yeah that was one of his things that got him to the point where he just you know passed away i mean that got him uh you know cancer eventually it was one of the you know founding factors of what got him to his ultimate cancer wow. but yeah that that was a rough, obviously a rough situation to yeah deal with. Um, I, and I would not ever wish that on anyone having to be in that situation that I was, that I went through, right. but that, that was definitely one of those things, um, that finally though, you know, while it was depressing, it finally got me inspired to not want to go down that same exact route journey or path myself. And because of that, I, you know, not only was weightlifting then, but I really got more serious about my weightlifting and got even more consistent. And then from there, I even got more consistent and started really focusing on my nutrition even more and sometimes more than my weightlifting because nutrition is even more important by the end of the day, anyhow. And knowing that I was like, yeah, I got to really focus on this. Um, I don't, again, I don't want to go down that same path. That's not, not the route I want to be on. And then from there I got, addicted not just with the endorphins of the workouts i was doing but the overall feel good energy that you would get when you eat healthy and that's what what i was receiving then out of that and then from there i transferred uh transferred that to everyone else that i knew and loved that would need that same help with their own fitness and health journey and then eventually after you know branching out to those people i just wanted to branch out to everyone and even if I didn't know him and I started doing that and I was like, the best way to do that would be virtually. Right. I mean, you can reach so many people on the social media. That's right. That's right. And that's what I realized. And I was like, okay, fitness, health, social media, wide, wide reach. If 
find people that need help. Okay. I want to start helping people one body at a time. And that that's what got me down that journey. And then eventually that's where I've been ever since, but yeah, just helping people one body at a time and not even just with their physical, but their uh, overall mental and right. just, you know, confidence, their yeah. mental state, confidence in um, sleep, energy, just the whole nine yards. Thank you for sharing that. I, I could feel and hear the passion in your voice, woman, especially when you spoke about your grandfather and, and seeing the struggles with the, the eating disorders and that kind of stuff. I, I look at your information and there's something that I specifically want to dwell on for a moment. And you okay. just mentioned it. You said you have helped over 50 people transform their physical and mental health. Is there a specific program, Roman, that you use, something that they would subscribe to that you would help them overcome their physical and mental disabilities or challenges as the case might be? Yeah, it really depends, you know, on their overall fitness uh, and health goals. Okay. So if they're trying to improve, you know, flexibility and mobility, it obviously wouldn't be very fixated on like, you know, heavy weights yeah. or anything like of that nature. It would be more, you know, lightweight, low impact exercises, even resistance bands. Mm -hmm. um, and then some, obviously a lot of stretches, a lot of stretching. So that would be more of what I would offer on that. Now it depends if they want to gain muscle or yeah. burn fat, then it would be more, you know, uh, mm -hmm. strength training strength training, um, even heavier strength training at times, depending where they're at too, with their fitness level. And then obviously adding cardio if they're trying to burn extra calories and making sure the calories and the meals are on point too, with whatever goal they have, whether it be gaining muscle or losing weight. So yeah, it just varies from client to client, but that's what's really neat is seeing a wide array of different clientele and seeing who I can just help from there. Um, obviously I have a niche. I usually help people lose weight, but I also do help people gain muscle and improve flexibility, um, if they need that too. So yeah, that's really yeah. been my, um, my thing. Yeah. Just helping people of different areas and then just having a customized program centered around their, uh, overall goals. Yeah. Great. Sounds good, Roman. Thanks for sharing. How do you, and I guess I should put it this way. Have you been able to help people overcome any level of anxiety or depression with regards to your program? And if so, how has it made a difference in their lives so that they could get the help that they need? Yeah, definitely. So one of my, just one of my greatest clients, I got to admit, she's, you know, she used to deal with a lot of other than feeling sluggish and having, you know, more fat weight. Uh, she also used to have not as much confidence. Her anxiety was, you know, a lot higher. Yeah. She was actually a um, veteran and, you know, still is a veteran, of course. And she had that, you know, PTSD from, of course, being in the military. Mm -hmm. But with all that being said, ever since she's joined my program and has worked with me month to month to month, yeah. she's seen a dramatic change, not right. just in her overall weight loss and weight reduction specifically yeah. with her fat weight. Um, and she's got so much more toned, but also her anxiety is a lot lower, dramatically lower. Like you can tell, like she's not only happier because she's lost the weight and feels better and more confident, thus lowering her anxiety, but also the just benefits of that with the endorphins and everything she's been doing with me with healthier eating and working out. You can tell her PTSD, like she even has admitted to me on, on the uh, coaching calls that I do with her and other people. Yeah. She admitted that her PTSD it's there, but it's a lot less like oh. dramatically less. Like it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that would make her anxious and even trigger her PTSD, uh, PTSD to an extent was drinking uh, water bottles. Cause she used to drink that in the desert and something ha went down. Uh, back, you know, when she was in the military, when she would drink water bottles, and she never really because of that mentally, she could never really bring herself to drinking, um, you know, water bottles, you can get at the store. So 
ever since she's worked with me after a few months of just the healthy living with the eating and working out and really to just the improvement to her mindset by giving her motivation and consistency her PTSD with that, like she can actually drink water bottles now and not think uh-huh. about it. it. It's cool. Right. It's, it, yes, it's yes, crazy. Yes. You know, most people don't think that, you know, some people struggle with stuff like that or yeah. that they can get away from those struggles. But over time, you you can really definitely transform that. And over, yeah, over time, th- there's so much that can change. It's cool. Yeah, great. Wonderful. It's a good story. Thanks for sharing, Roman. Oh, yeah, definitely. You, yeah, for you personally, what it is that keeps you inspired and stick into the script. And I'm looking rather in terms of the transformational progress that we each seek every day in our lives. There's something that keeps us going, that drives us, the catalyst that pushes us. We get energy from it, you know? What is it for you, Rohan? Yeah, for me, what it really is, what really keeps me going and wanting to get to the next step, the next level in my life with whatever I do, especially in fitness, is just knowing that, you know, not only remembering why I started, Mm -hmm. I'd say there's two things, remembering why I started to begin with, Uh and that helps keep me not just motivated, but even more consistent, if you will, just knowing why I started this whole journey you know, to become healthier and better for myself and to help other people out in the process. I'd say in addition to that, though, knowing that there's always another goal that I can achieve. And then looking back at all the other goals that I already have achieved, that really just, you know, lights that fire inside of me to want to just keep going and keep going and just never stop. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's addicting, yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. a good addiction. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. It is. It is. So Roman, is is there some sort of memoir or, or publication in the making? Have you thought about putting some of the stuff that you do to get in a publication and getting it out there to people? Yes, I have not officially started on one um, as of now, but that's definitely one of the things I want to do uh, yeah. in the future. Yeah, preferably in the near future, but yeah, not probably not too too much longer into the future. But I definitely have plans to do that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, great. Do you have the opportunity to work with youths? We have a, 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 a generation of fast food people that are struggling. We have a lot of young people that are diabetic and obese and so on. Do you get the opportunity to reach out to these young people and to help them to overcome some of these challenges? Yeah, yeah. Well, I have not as of yet, but uh-huh. I'm definitely... I would definitely love to, though. Yes. Um, yeah, definitely wanting to also try working with some, you mm-hmm. know, people of that age, um, even online or, I mean, in person, too, if the opportunity arises. Okay. Sounds like a plan. So, you know, there's a saying that your health is your wealth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I say all the time. <laughs> you know, without, without health... I mean, you can't do anything. So it, you know, it, it sort of transforms itself into you being able to get the better things in life or have a better quality of life as the case might be. People that are CEOs, for example, Roman, you know, of large companies like Apple and Amazon and stuff, or they're in a high executive position, maybe they have 300 people under their purview as the case might be. What kind of advice would you give them? Because at the end of the day, sometimes you find a situation where you are in a position that demands so much of your time that you hardly eat properly, you hardly eat on time. You need to balance that, but you can't get it. You need exercise, but you can't get it. Why? The demands of the job, the demands of your career, the demands of the position. How do you advise them to manage their time in such a way that they get enough rest, a good diet, and at the same time, have the energy and focus to be the person that their job requires them to be. For sure. So there's a couple of ways of going uh, going about that. I would say the easiest way, especially if you are super busy, I don't say it's you know necessary. And I'm not going to say it's 
you know, something that everyone should do because this yeah. isn't for everyone. What right. I'll uh, say here, but intermittent fasting is actually really good for okay. people that are busy because it can actually boost your energy, mm-hmm. improve mental focus and overall mental clarity, even in the process. Right. And what's really good about that is that'll help you get through your day. Most people just uh, skip breakfast and then they eat lunch and dinner. That's the most common. And I would say even the better or best way to intermittent fast. So I would recommend that for most people, if you're, especially if you're new to fasting, that Mm -hmm. way you can try it out and see how you like it. If you don't like it, eating breakfast won't kill you. I mean, eating breakfast is, is also good in its own regard. They both have their pros and cons. Okay. Um, obviously, intermittent fasting for some people can be a little rough, though, because yeah. some people love breakfast. And hey, I mean, I understand. <laughs> I think we all technically do. But yeah. yeah, if you want that extra boost of energy and mental clarity and focus, I would definitely push for intermittent fasting 100%. After that, I would say um, just make small meals throughout the day. If you can't fit big meals in, mm-hmm. uh, try meal prepping. Yeah. Try it on a day when you're not working, just cook mm-hmm. up some meals. I know it takes a little time, but it, it won't take too much of your time, especially if they're, you know, quicker meals. And I would just meal prep out uh, the overall calories and macros you need for that day of each meal. And if it helps, again, break it down into like four or five meals instead of three big meals. That way you're not eating a bunch at once and you can just spread it out. But you can also do that where you have three big meals. Um, you know, cooked in advance. So just in general, I would recommend meal prepping to help, you know, still get those foods that you like and without having to rush to a fast food uh, store or a restaurant, you can just meal prep out those meals. That way you're guaranteed to still have the healthy meals without having to make them on that day. And that way it's a lot easier to go along with your work day and your meals. And then from there, um, in addition to those things, I also recommend, uh, you know, working out either earlier, getting up earlier. I know that's not everyone's favorite uh, thing to hear, (laughs) but getting up earlier can definitely help with just getting that workout in earlier and building that discipline and consistency. I definitely am one to work out early. I don't like working out late. That's not my thing. Some people like that. And if that's your Mm -hmm. cup of tea, don't don't go against that. Do whatever works best for you by the end of the day and your schedule, of course. But I would say for most people, they usually work, you know, first shift. So I would recommend work, uh, working out early in the day, or if not that, then do it after. But if you're one of those people that don't have a lot of energy, that is when I typically would recommend doing it earlier in the day. Or what you could even do is you could fit it in midday you know, if you're one of those people that like to work out on your lunch break, that also can work, you know, but just do it for um, sometimes, you know, doing shorter workouts, you know, more like 10 to 15 minute uh, circuit workouts that can also help if you're trying to lose weight. That's a great thing to you. Um, And doing like 10 to 15 minute workouts that can be easier to get in in a quicker amount of time. Um, Or you could even do it this way where you do you know, more workouts on more days, but you um, have them shorter. So that's another way to spread it out and still get everything in, but not compile so much in one day. Yeah. So all those things will definitely just help it be a lot uh, easier to manage, you know? Right. Great. How, how do you, and this maybe is for athletes or people who are actually involved in high burnout fitness programs, if I can describe it as that. But I'm looking at the terms minerals, electrolytes, vitamin C, that kind of balance. How do you get people to get that balance intake? What are some of the things that they should drink? Are there supplements that they could use? Is it just lots of water like three liters per day as the case might be? What is a combination of stuff that you would put together for those important ingredients, electrolytes, minerals, and vitamin C? Yes, for sure. So for the electrolytes, 
I would recommend. I don't recommend, you know, Gatorade or yeah, yeah. Powerade because I mean, yeah. yes, it has it in it, but it has a lot of sugar in it back to that. Right. So right. definitely stay away from that. Stay away from that. I know it sounds weird, but those are actually not healthy for you. So I recommend personally alkaline water because that can actually have, you know, obviously it's healthy hydration, but it's also mm-hmm. going to give you those electrolytes in it. Right. And you can get a gallon jug. Which, if you're very athletic, that's what I really recommend to you on water intake is having close to, if not a gallon a day, and then having a gallon of alkaline water with the electrolytes in it. That's that's yeah. going to be great as far as getting your water intake and electrolytes in. So killing two birds with one stone there. <laughs> in addition to that, as far as vitamins go, you could I I recommend if you're you know if you're one of those people that's not really in the sun very often. I definitely mm-hmm. recommend a vitamin D supplement then. Okay. Um, depending, I would check, you know, get some blood work done. I've done this too. Try to get some blood work done at the doctor's office and whoever you see for your doctor and get your blood work done. See what your levels are with your um, overall, just, uh, you know, vitamins and everything within you. And if you're low on vitamin D, especially if you're not in the sun, that would make sense. So usually what you want to do is supplement it with the vitamin D uh, supplement. And I recommend about, you know, uh, typically and it varies, but typically people just need an extra thousand to 2000 I use. So it, it depends though what, you know, your um, overall circumstances, but just getting that blood work done so you can know how short you are with that. Yeah. And, then t- and then from there, just supplement it with vitamin D3. So that's the best thing you can do with that. And then also fish oil. Fish oil is really yeah, good because yeah, it helps yeah. reduce joint inflammation right. and it can even help with your heart health to an extent. So yeah. I would recommend fish oil or you could do krill oil, but that's a little more expensive. So uh, fish oil really just gets the job done by the end of the day. And it's typically half the cost. <laughs> so yeah. I recommend fish oil for that, uh, those reasons alone. And then from there, If you uh, want to, this isn't technically recommended um, for everyone, but Mm -hmm. especially if you already get a lot of vitamins in, but if you're one of those people that don't have a lot of vitamins, getting a multivitamin uh, can be very helpful and that ensures you get all the vitamins in. But if you already get a lot of vitamins in, I wouldn't suggest it in that, in that case. So usually if you don't want to take multivitamins you can also take blueberries spinach have just all your fruits and vegetables and make sure you're getting enough orange juice or at least one to two servings of that and yeah drinking milk having calcium so you can get it outside of a multivitamin of course don't fall for that myth that you have Mm -hmm. to have a multivitamin but if you are lacking in that especially after getting blood work done then Mm -hmm. i would recommend a multivitamin just depending okay. on your scenario, though. Yeah, yeah, great, great, wonderful. In terms of the industry that you are in, it's a very popular industry. And I know that there are a lot of people who are not just into athletics, but other levels of sports, and probably those who are coming out of Hollywood. If you had to choose someone that you admire as a mentor in your industry who Maybe you would not have patterned totally, but inspired you to continue the the quest that you are currently on. Is there that person in your life? Yeah, there's there's a few. There's definitely a few. Uh One of them, so one of them is a celebrity. One's not quite a celebrity, but, you know, he's uh, pretty well known to an extent in the fitness industry. So to name one of them, he was actually my business mentor um but he also it's cool because he actually does fitness coaching to you and he also has modeled in the past just like i've been doing oh. recently <laughs> so oh. it's pretty really cool how similar we are and yeah. those yeah. Re- all those regards really but his name yeah is derek um he has his own fitness coaching to you called fit mm-hmm. with derek but yeah that's that's something that or someone that inspired me to okay. keep not just get into this more but really keep yeah. it going yeah okay great so we're coming to the end of this amazing episode with Roman Fisher high performance coach and I just want to ask you a few questions 
We have a little fun time coming down at the end. But before we get to the fun time, let me ask you the philosophical question. There are things in the world that disturb a lot of people. Um, there's a whole lot of inequalities. There's hunger, there's cancer. Um, there's racial disharmony, racial discrimination. There's a large divide in society worldwide with regards to the have and the have nots. You name it, it's everywhere. Oh yeah. If there's one thing that you think we should not have to deal with, what would that be for you, Roman? Yeah, that's that's a powerful question, man. That <laughs> that really does have me thinking here. So, I mean, obviously, I would say none of them <laughs> would be are good. That's the easiest way that I can answer that. But to really stick to what your uh, question was, mm -hmm. I would have to say, yeah, man, because I feel like if I say one, then oh, that's tough. Yeah, I would have to say honestly. Oh uh, man, this kind of sounds like a cop out, <laughs> but if I, I know, cause I'm a perfection, being a perfectionist or yeah. I try to, you know, I try to strive for perfection. I try not to do it too much, but I try to do it enough without obsessing too much over it. But I would have to say imperfection in general. I know that's the most cop out answer. Cause that kind of gets rid of all those problems at once then. Mm -hmm. But if, if it's, if it would be possible, I would say just getting rid of, you know, just overall corruption or imperfection in the whole world from all those issues you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for sharing. I, I like that approach, Roman. It's different. And every time I ask that question, I get some surprises. You just surprise me as well. So, fun time. And I oh, know yeah. this is, is kind of down your alley a little bit. Um, you have a choice. Would it be Ham and cheese or peanut butter and jelly? Yeah, you know, honestly, because both of those are okay in moderation. <laughs> in moderation, those are both okay. I would have to say peanut butter and jelly, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, why? why peanut butter and jelly over the other? Yeah, I mean, they're both good. Don't get me wrong. They both taste good. Yeah. Um, You know, I would have to still say just peanut butter and jelly because that – Usually, I, I it tastes a little better to me, for and it it does get me a little fuller. Okay, I hear yep. you. I hear you. Okay, good. Here's number two. Would it be the NBA, the NFL, NHL, or Sunday evening baseball? As far as to watch, <laughs> what's your preferred one? NBA, okay. NFL, NHL, or Sunday evening baseball. Which one would you choose? Wow. Okay. I know it's it's crazy being a fitness coach. I'm not a huge sports fan as far as like watching yeah. sports. But okay. if I had if I had to pick one though, being mm -hmm. that my family is involved in sports heavily, yeah. I would have to say the NFL. Ah, okay. Any particular reason why? Yeah, I would personally i would just say it's my you know family's uh kind of like their legacy and like they're with their sports uh you know with how fanatic they are with the packers i would have to say green, that yeah. yeah green bay Packers, green bay but oh, aaron, yeah. aaron Rodgers is gone man so <laughs> yeah that legacy kind of... has lasted for quite a while and he's gone so we'll, we'll see how interesting it gets now oh yeah definitely yeah okay finally would it be Apple, Microsoft, or Google? Okay, I love it. So I would have to say Apple. Yeah, why Apple? Yeah, so they're all really, obviously they're all very um, helpful and useful in our you know day-to-day -day society and what we do, whether it's with career or not. But yeah. I would have to say Apple just because it's more luxurious. I know, like, uh, yeah. Exactly. It I sounds a little, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It sounds great though to me. Apples, <laughs> like that's that's always what I what I use. Okay. <laughs> great, wonderful. You have been a wonderful guest, Roman Fisher, high performance coach. And we thank you for sharing your insights and the things that are very important to you. Also, a lot of content, a lot of information for people in different genres of life that they can gravitate to and improve overall their mental 
and their physical fitness. So thank you so much for coming on the breakout room for us. That's it for now, folks. Uh, remember our three watchwords, health, happiness, and prosperity. Until next time, this is Andy of Andy's Personal Development in the breakout room together with our guest, Roman Fisher, saying so long. Bye for now. See you soon. Namaste. Stay safe, guys.